Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm my name is Li Qingdang from a university in Japan. Uh, today, I would like to uh, talk about zebrafish model for obesity and diabetes research. Um, a simple introduction of our IMA university. Um, it's established in 1949 and uh, uh, not a big university. Uh, there are two facilities in Mia University. Uh, one is Medical Zebrafish Research Center and the, sec the second is Zebrafish Drug Screening Center. Uh, we started to use zebrafish for medical research from 2004. I think the, it's a little bit uh, late than American or Europe. <laughs> um, as I'm sure you know, uh, the BMI mass, um, okay, the BMI uh, is a value that derived from the weight and height of an individual. Um, person can be uh, categorized as uh, underweight, health weight, overweight, or uh, obese uh, based on these values. Uh, according to uh, recent data uh, in, Amer in America, the the adult obesity rates exceed 20 25% uh, in 43 states uh, in 2016. Uh, we can see in Maryland uh, the obesity rates is around uh, 30% and is highly increased from uh, 1990. So. Um, it is well known that zebrafish is a good animal model for the human uh, disease. Uh, how should we do to prevent the uh, prevalence of obesity? So first, uh, we think we need an obesity model of zebrafish. Uh, there are three approaches to uh, create an obesity model of zebrafish, uh, including induced models, uh, transgenic lines, and uh, mutant lines. Uh, this is this report is our uh, obesity models, uh, which uh, published on 2010. Uh, we um, developed this model by overfeeding Altimia. As we all know, uh, Altimia is an um, uh, easily accessible food and is usually used in deeper fish facility uh, worldwide. Uh, we first investigated the uh, nutrition facts of Altimia. Uh, this is our original data, and uh, the conclusion is uh, first the, the energy of uh, 100 gram of out, uh, dry uh, altimia is 390 uh, kilocalorie, and one size of altimia is 0 0.0095 calorie. I, I'm not sure if this uh, information is useful. Um, so uh, the Finally, the fat contents of Altimia is just 15%. So uh, we conclude that Altimia cannot be find, defined as a high fat diet. Uh, we then uh, divided adult zebrafish, uh, this adult is over uh, three months old age, age and uh, we divided to normal feeding group and overfeeding group. The normal feeding zebra fish were fed five milligrams of uh, altimia or once daily, and the overfeeding uh, zebra fish were fed a total of 60 milligrams of uh, altimia and uh, were fed three times daily. So, oh, what's that? Um, after eight weeks of overfeeding, we can see that both a male and female uh, have significantly increased BMI. And the plasma uh, lipids are also uh, significantly uh, increased after eight weeks of overfeeding, both in male and female. Uh, we performed 3D micro CT to evaluate the uh, adipose tissue volumes of the, our, our uh, DIO fish. Uh, these are the uh, 3D micro CT images for normal feeding and overfeeding feeding zebra fish. Uh, gray color is uh, in, uh, indicates the bone, and the yellow color indicates the uh, adipose tissues. 
So these are uh, 2D image after software analysis. We can see the uh, yellow colors indicates the uh, visceral uh, adipose tissue, and the orange color indicates the uh, subcutaneous uh, adipose tissue. So after quantification of adipose tissue uh, volume, and here's the result, the total body fat, uh, visceral adipose, adipose tissue and uh, subcutaneous adipose tissue are great higher uh, than that of control group. And the oil red O staining of the uh, fruit section uh, also revealed the lipid uh, accumulation in liver. This is the uh, transcriptome analysis of the visceral uh, adipose tissue. Uh, we can see the um, uh, in, uh, in obesity in obese liver fish and mammal uh, share the common pathological pathways in lipid metabolism. Uh, so we therefore use these uh, obesity models for uh, to evaluate the anti-obesity functions of numeral uh, natural products. Uh, for example, this is a uh, tomato. Uh, Uh, green tea, or the compounds extracted from uh, seaweed. So they, these are all our achievements. Um, so um, as we all know, obese people have a high risk of developing uh, type 2 diabetes. And uh, uh, in the United, the United States has a, a double uh, epidemic of uh, diabetes and obesity. So this is the 20% uh, of adults are obese and 7% have diabetes in 2006. And these data are uh, depicts the relationship between weight gain in, other, in uh, adulthood and the re uh, relative risk of type 2 diabetes. Um, so the concurrency is a risk increased exponentially with larger gains in weight. Uh, although we successfully uh, created um, our obesity model of zebrafish, uh, it has one weak point, um, is that it is normal glycemic. So how can we get hyperglycemic zebrafish? Uh, we think it may be related to foods. So we gathered what we can uh, do uh, the current diets used in zebrafish, and we investigated, investigated the uh, nutrition facts. Uh, to be noted that the HFD32 uh, uh, is a high fat diet used in rodents. Uh, we have fed it to zebrafish, but it seems that they didn't like that the taste. So uh, we just focus on these seven diets. Uh, from tetramine to autemia, and uh, there's no big difference on energy. So we uh, next uh, focus on the uh, palatability and the food intake volume. Uh, this data, uh, six styles is tested. Um, here, BT is a uh, beef tallow. Um, we mixed beef tallow into uh, the powder diets to make a hard fat diet, high fat diet. And we can see the uh, best three diets in uh, food intake volume is uh, autohemy B2, uh, BT, uh, autohemy B2, and uh, Zegla. The calorie intake are also higher. I'm sorry, there's no data on BT, autohemy B2. So, uh, because Zegla, uh, older Zegla in Japan is uh, troublesome, and uh, the BT autumn is uh, sticky, and it's hard to fed the zebrafish in the quantitative uh, amount. So we finally decided uh, autumn B2 as uh, our test diet. Uh, it's made by a Japanese uh, Japan company, and um, it's designed for uh, freshwater uh, fish and not especially for zebrafish. 
Um, next, we use autotomy B2 uh, to um, measure the fold intake volume in short term. Uh, this is uh, yeah, this is uh, in short term for uh, three hours. We can see the uh, maximum fold intake in five minutes is 10 milligram, and the maximum fold intake in one hour is 15 milligram. Uh, there's no big difference between male and female in three hours. And next, we uh, perform the continuous uh, feeding at one hour interval. Uh, the total time. Uh, the total feeding times is uh, 11. So um, according to uh, this data, uh, because the maximum food, in the, uh, food intake in one hour is 15 milligram, so uh, the simple, uh, the simply calculated result of one day maximum food intake uh, should be uh, 825 milligram for five fish. But uh, uh, the, the result of the meal uh, is consistent with this conclusion. Uh, however, female exceeds this uh, standard. Uh, for this reason, uh, the gender dis difference appears in our uh, one-day fold intake volume. Um, to uh, modify the overfeeding method, we uh, also tried the automated uh, feeding system. This is a fold uh, prime fold timer, um, it can apply the same amount of fold every time, and it can feed uh, fish five or more times daily, and uh, just set it on the lid of the tank, and it's very convenient. Uh, so uh, combine the automated B2 and the automated, uh, automated feeding system, uh, we fed uh, the two groups with uh, this protocol. And to be surprised, we got the hypoglycemic zebra fish. Um, they also have a high uh, increased uh, body weight and the fasting uh, blood glucose uh, after one week of overfeeding is increased. This trend is uh, continued until the end of the study. Um, because uh, caloric uh, restriction is the most frequently uh, treatment for diabetes, we also performed uh, caloric uh, restriction for two and four weeks. Uh, after this treatment, uh, the fasting blood glucose uh, is reduced, oh, I'm sorry, is reduced, uh, but still higher than that of nose DIO group. Uh, by the way, I was usually asked, how can I uh, collect the blood from zebra fish without killing him? Um, please ask this video. Um, after anesthesia, uh, using a glass capillary connected with uh, an uh, asputus tube, then uh, insert into the middle side. Look for the uh, dose order, and then take a shock suction. I think it may be a fire microliter. So after blood collection, uh, just uh, press the puncture to stop the bleeding, and then uh, recover the fish uh, into the system water. It can alive. This technique is very simple to master. Oh, I can't wait to it. Over. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so next, we um, measure the uh, glucose. Oh, yeah. We perform the uh, intraperitoneal um, intra and oral glucose tolerance test. Uh, this we can see the. Um, in DIO zebra fish, the blood glucose level are higher, uh, uh, increased in all the point and cannot uh, back to the basal level. So we decided our fish is glucose intolerance. And because a glucose intolerance is uh, associated with 
insulin resistance. Uh, we quantify the insulin uh, production in DIO zebra fish. Um, there's no commercially available uh, antibody for zebra fish insulin uh, suitable for uh, vaccine blood analysis. So we use insulin EGFP transgenic line uh, to quantify insulin levels by the EGFP expression. And the uh, average EGFP intensity is uh, higher in is uh, is uh, significant significantly higher than uh, non group non DIO group. And the Western blood analysis revealed that uh, the abundance of GFP protein is also higher than uh, that of control group. So. Uh, to evaluate if our uh, model can respond to human drugs, we uh, treated fish with anti-diabetic uh, drugs. Uh, both the metformin and uh, glimepiride are both uh, reduced the uh, blood glucose levels. Uh, next, we perform the uh, transgenic uh, uh, no, uh, we, we perform the uh, RND sequencing and process to uh, pathway analysis. Uh, the GSA uh, analysis uh, revealed that the gene sets related to uh, immune response, nervous system, and uh, vascularization are uh, all uh, listed as common as human and zebrafish, uh, either in diabetic pancreas or uh, diabetic liver. Uh, this in uh, insulin sequence pathways are also revealed that um, the similar uh, gene expression alterations uh, between zebrafish and human. Uh, these are our ongoing projects. Uh, we got uh, candidate genes related to diabetes, and uh, firstly, screening them with uh, vivo mobile um by um evaluate that their uh effects on the uh, blood glucose levels and then the positive genes are picked out to make a uh, crispens so finally uh we performed mouse experiments uh using siRNA liposome uh, complex and as the, as a result we have found one uh, therapeutic uh target gene that uh via knockdown its expression level, it can ameliorate the hyperglycemic. Uh, uh, I'm preparing the manuscript now uh, for publish. Okay, in summary, we uh, created two uh, zebrafish models and demonstrated these, uh, uh, they are useful tools for human obesity and diabetes research. Uh, I would like to uh, acknowledge my profession and my college. Thank you for attention. <laughs> How did you go about uh, measuring the food intake? Yeah, um, we have two methods. Uh, you can see the mm, in the short term, we did three hours, we just fail them in uh, for example, they first divide the food in a very, very small amount and then put in the uh, tank. After the, the fish complete, completely ate them and then put in another one, which is a manual uh, method. And the second, for uh, one day, we just uh, put a, amount, um, a big amount of, of the food and uh, then if they, they have um, the leftover food we are collecting onto a filter and then dry, dry them and then uh, measure the weight. Do you know, uh, you, you mentioned the initial diet that you're using for diet induced obesity did not in, induce hyperglycemia, right? Do you know what it is in these new diets that are inducing the hyperglycemia? Is that something you're interested yeah. in? No, I'm sorry. I just 
we just did the ordering a bit here. I didn't see you. Maybe F, maybe zero is also that. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. <laughs> 